today. Intel shows off their Arc A750. Intel's desktop Arc GPUs are a disaster. Performance for NVIDIA's RTX 4070 and 4080 GPUs. And AMD confirms these Ryzen 7000 CPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, Intel's own Ryan Strout released a video that gives us some more information on Intel's upcoming desktop GPUs. For one, he demos the upcoming Arc A750, where he shows off Death Stranding on a 1440p monitor using VRR or Variable Refresh Rate. You can see the refresh rate of the monitor is matching the refresh rate of the GPU. That obviously helps eliminate screen tearing and stutter. And while Arc should support all VRR monitors, Intel is validating the top 100 100 monitors to ensure it's easy to use, etc. Next, he goes over HDR and confirms that Arc does in fact support HDR, given your monitor does. He then discusses confusion we've seen with HDMI 2.1. Basically, their own limited edition cards do have it, but it ultimately supports HDMI 2.0. It just requires an extra chip to turn the display port into an HDMI 2.1, but that's optional for their AIB partners, so it's possible to get a card that doesn't support it. Finally, when we go back to that variable refresh rate test, we see that the card is running at around 80 to 100 FPS in Death Stranding at 1440p. If we compare that, we can see it looks to be around a 5700 XT, but of course we don't have all the variables like the CPU or even the settings in the game, just that it's 1440p. But regardless, it's not looking bad. Unfortunately, it's not all good news for Intel. Now, if you've been having problems buying a current gen GPU, you actually have a chance to pick up one of NVIDIA's Video or AMD's next-gen GPUs when they're released. If you sign up for the GamerMail Notification Squad, a free way to keep up with all the great PC hardware releases coming soon. From awesome new PC hardware deals to getting notified right when a big release drops. Just visit the link in the description, put your email in, and you're all set. I won't send you a bunch of spam or anything like that either. The last thing I sent was on Amazon's Prime Day. I mean, it's free, and you can unsubscribe anytime you want, so there's nothing to lose. Join the thousands of others by visiting the link in the description below. Next up for today, a bunch of roadmaps have been leaked for Intel's desktop Arc GPUs, and they basically show that Intel has had some serious issues with their launch. The story comes from Moore's Law is Dead, who shared multiple roadmaps given to different divisions within Intel as well as Intel's partners. And in the first roadmap, we see that Intel shows all SKUs, which are SKU 6 for the A380, SKU 1 is the A770, SKU 2 is A750, and SKU 3 the A580. Each of these SKUs were supposed to launch to system integrators at the end of July, and then AIBs in August. Well, here we are at the end of July, and according to his AIB sources, they still have no clue what's going on. They're apparently pretty upset about it as well, which is understandable. Supposedly, the new CEO was set to change this, but it doesn't look like he has, at least for now. Next is a slide that, according to Moore's Law is Dead, was sent out just a few weeks ago, and it shows that they're still to be confirmed. Here's another slide showing that Intel plan to launch globally, not just in China. Yet we've heard nothing. Well, I say nothing, but leakers have found that ASUS and MSI are showing pre-built systems equipped with an A380 and A310, but we haven't seen an announcement on it or anything. And these are the complete low end of the market. Next in this slide, you can see that they claim there's an ARC story, not launch in September. Specifically, not launch. So it's going to launch in July, then they don't know, then July, and not launch by September. Talk about confusing. To top it all off, if you remember, I recently went over the GPUs that Intel sweepstakes winners would get. Well, Intel is even telling those winners that they don't have a clue when they'll get them. Basically, Intel is completely butchering their ARC GPU launch. AIBs know it, you know it, I know it, will Intel admit it? Probably not. Next up, we finally get to see some performance numbers on NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 4070 and 4080. This comes from resident leaker copi 7 Kimmy, and as you can see, he claims the RTX 4070 gets a time spy extreme score of around 10,000, and if that's correct, it would mean the RTX 4070 would be right around the same performance as the RTX 3090, so we're essentially talking a two-tier jump in performance. Next is the RTX 4080, where you can see he claims it gets over 15,000 in times by extreme, and that would make the 4080 nearly twice as fast as the 3080. Now, with that said, it does look like he's getting this performance based 
on the specs that he knows and not necessarily an actual benchmark. And that looks to have been the case with that 4090 benchmark I recently covered. At least that's what it seems. Still, Kofite 7 Kimi has proved to be a very accurate leaker in the past, so this could easily be accurate. Of course, the supposed full 8102 GPU benchmark that we recently saw does look to be an actual benchmark, so things are looking up. And honestly, if the 4070 and 4080 are anywhere near this, next gen is set to be a massive jump over current gen. And lastly for today, AMD looks to have confirmed Ryzen 7000's lineup of CPUs. The story comes from Video Cards, who found that in AMD's own public resource library, they listed four Ryzen 7000 CPUs. Specifically, you can see right here that we have the 7950X, 7900X, 7700X, and finally the 7600X. Of course, you may notice that AMD doesn't list a 7800X, yet they have a 7700X. That's odd because they've had a 800 part since the first generation, and they didn't release the 5700X until way after the 5000 series launch. What I'm thinking is that AMD is trying to more correlate their CPUs with Intel's, so the 7700X would challenge the i7-700K model, the 7900X would be the i9-900K model, etc. And the 800X was definitely the odd one out, so it makes sense. Though right now, 12th gen better challenges AMD's higher up models. With that said, it could just not be listed listed here, but this at least confirms these four CPUs. Unfortunately, it doesn't give us specs or anything like that, but given AMD has essentially confirmed that 16 cores is their max core count, we can assume the 7950X is the 16 core part, the 7900X is the 12 core part, the 7700X gets 8 cores, and the 7600X has 6. At the end of the day, Ryzen 7000 is definitely interesting, but we'll have to see how well it competes with Intel's Raptor Lake. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's Ryzen 7000 series, or are you more excited for Nvidia's next-gen GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below, and definitely make sure to check out the GamerMail Notification Squad. And as always, have a great day!